Welcome back to the Stars Made Me Do It. You've got Sierra and Mimi here, and we are Hello. with, we are back for part two of the Myers Briggs and astrology series. And this is yeah. the series, the or the part, the diplomats. And yeah. this has been really fun to talk about. And I'm excited for this particular episode because both Mimi and I are diplomats. So we're gonna get to really come at it with some firsthand experience here. Yeah, we got a lot of really good feedback for the first part for the analysts. Um, so I'm excited to get into this part of the series because I think that a lot of our listeners are going to be diplomats as well. Um, and we'll get into what makes a diplomat a diplomat. Um, but before we get into that, make sure you go follow us at Instagram and TikTok at the stars made me podcast and also on Patreon, patreon.com slash the stars made me do it. You get episodes like these five days early. You get to join our discord. You get extra episodes every week and you get to influence episodes that we prioritize so you know go yeah, do that and, it's fun <laughs> and for these type of episodes we always go to our patrons to use their charts as examples for things so if mm -hmm. you want to get extra insights either you know through our discord or through these episodes it's a great place to join yeah so let's get into it um if you don't know about myers-briggs it's a personality test there are 16 different results we're gonna do i'm just gonna do a quick little recap in case you're just listening to the diplomats because you're in this one um we are basically myers-briggs uses four letters to define your personality so there's i and e for introverted versus extroverted there's n and s for intuitive and sensing there's f and t which is feeling versus thinking and then there's j versus p which is judging versus prospecting or prospecting um so also today, perceiving oh yeah also perceiving yeah. so today we're doing diplomats and what makes a diplomat a diplomat is that they all have the n and f so they all have the intuitive and feeling which are not like one in the same right like last there are SF there or not SF there's um yeah SF or NT um so we're really leaning into this very emotionally driven personality yeah. type yeah, because if you listen to our the first part of this with the analyst, there was that NT, which is there's mm -hmm. an intuitive part, but then there's a thinking part. And yeah. this part is when we're really leaning into the intuitive and then the feeling and mm -hmm. I also thought that it was fascinating that for this particular set of Myers-Briggs personality, these diplomats, that we had the most responses for, you know, we have a Google, what is it, form? Google form, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. actually, quick, before you um, say what you're about to say, go check out this Google form that we have where you do share your chart and share with us your Myers-Briggs results. And then you can also let us know any correlations between the two that you found, and we'll use it in these future episodes. Yeah, and in that Google form that we did, we had the most responses so far to mm -hmm. the diplomats category. And I found that so on point because it is intuitive and feeling. And so it's not yeah. surprising, especially the fact that the two of us are in this diplomats category. It is not surprising that it is a lot of the, you know, astrology world that is also seeking connection and understanding and and also a little bit of magic in that way from astrology yeah it's in the same way where during our venus series where we're also using a google form most of our listeners respond that like one of their core values is empathy you know it's like something yes. that we all are using astrology as a tool yeah it's kind of cool to see what types our listeners are and how they all fall into this category but not all i mean it, it was cool to see like the analysts that we have listening and kind of to think about like oh why are they listening to this like what about this i don't know inspires them or not inspires but interests them but leaning into that 94 percent of diplomats say they prefer deep conversation to small talk so there is that insightful and deep thinking side to the diplomats yeah because you you can lean into the feelings of things when you are getting into the the deeper conversations and deeper doesn't have to mean you know 
it has to, I don't know, the topics can vary, but getting into the depths of it, I really feel like that's when we are accessing the feelings part of it. Yeah, I mean, this really does just right off the bat gives me Scorpio and Pisces, like yeah. a compassion and an intuitive side. Um, and also just like deep insights, trying to understand um, human nature. Yeah. So a couple more pieces of information on just the diplomats as the umbrella personality. They would rather cooperate than compete. They're very empathetic. Um, they have deep insights into human nature. And then a quote, by the way, all quotes and all of this information, all of the quotes are from 16personalities.com. It's really the best resource out there for just like the archetypes of all of these personalities. Yeah. So this quote is about the umbrella um, personality of the diplomats. The sensitivity provides diplomat personalities with the motivation they need to tackle injustice, which is important. If left unchecked, however, this personality trait can trigger self-righteousness or single-mindedness. Ooh, I feel that. I definitely feel that. I love that. Like the tackling of the injustice, there's something. Yeah, because there's a when you have the feeling part, it doesn't mm -hmm. it's almost like you can't let go of it in in the same type of way because mm -hmm. it it's it's being felt rather than being thought. And as somebody who is a F married to a T, I mm -hmm. um, when we were in our second round of long distance relationship, I remember having this realization and thinking about it in a Myers Briggs terms where I was like, wow, he's a T and I'm an F. And for me, I need to feel that you miss me, that you love me, that you're thinking of me. And yeah. for him with the T, it was a knowing. It was like, well, I know that. And so that yep. is the comfort that I need. And I felt I needed the I needed to constantly be put into the state of feeling it because even though I knew it, it wasn't enough. And that's mm. something where I think is that where I could see that kind of tackling injustice of like when that feeling part won't leave you alone, <laughs> it's it's different yeah. from the the knowledge part of it. Yeah, and I think the whole tackling injustice comes from, you know, these personalities being super empathetic and feeling, you know, what other people are feeling. That's definitely a theme here with all all of the like more um, specific personalities that we're about to get into that they do feel into their surroundings and they absorb it or internalize it, especially the introverted um two introverted personalities like really internalize it and have the lesson is to decipher what is theirs versus what is not theirs and you know is it their job to really tackle this injustice or not yeah so yeah let's get into the first personality this is the advocate so this is actually mine and this is wild because this is the rarest out of all 16 personalities. This is the rarest personality, but it is the most common among our listeners. So it I found that is. so, so fascinating. It is. I know so many INFJs and it is the rarest. And it's, it's like, crazy. how, <laughs> how is it? My that? Aries and Leo yeah. loves it. I'm like, yes, I'm very rare. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited that that we have those stats. You know, I'm not I'm not the person who normally gets lit up by stats. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait, that is so exciting that the rarest category is the majority of listeners, because yeah. that really is it's a niche kind of avenue. And I it love does that. show up in the personality, too, because there is and I'll get to it, but there is a little bit about like feeling a lack of belonging and so like seeking people who yes. also feel that way and yes. and trying to find a sense of belonging like that which you know makes sense for it being rare so let's get into what 16 personalities has to say about it um while they have lofty goals and ambitions infjs shouldn't be mistaken for idle dreamers people with this personality type care about integrity and they're rarely satisfied until they've done what they know to be right conscientious to the core they move through life with a clear sense of their values and they aim to never lose sight of what truly matters not according to other people or society at large but according to their own wisdom and intuition and this i feel like i mean this i definitely relate to and i I think it connects to my Mars in Pisces um, mm -hmm. and also my Jupiter in Scorpio. Like um, my Mars in Pisces will not let me do something. Even if I've been given permission to do something, I need to feel like 
it is really right. I need it needs to feel in some sort of flow. Um, and it's not about like right versus wrong. It's not like that black and white. It's just what actually feels in flow, like what feels aligned. It's very woo woo. <laughs> but I also feel like the whole about integ the integrity is mm -hmm. an interesting. I mean, that's just a word that that's means a lot fiery. to me. That, but I was going to say that it feels like that's because you have Aries and Leo playing with that Pisces, that the Aries and Leo are very much, this is about me. And if it's going to mm -hmm. represent me or not, if it's going to sit well with me or not, it, the Pisces empathy part that you're bringing in, I think plays really nicely with those fiery, very, you know, more, I guess, ego driven energies, because it's, is this going to sit well with me? And does it feel right? Is this a yeah. good representation of me? And do I feel good about it? Yeah. And I also think, and I felt it when we were, I felt it when we were talking about the, um, social or not social but just injustice in general and doing what's right like Sagittarian energy because it's very much about like what is true for me and I think in um in whole sign my son is in the ninth house and I think that I can feel um like my morals I have to do everything in alignment with my morals yeah um all right, so let's continue. Perhaps because their personality type is so uncommon, INFJs tend to carry around a sense, whether conscious or not, of being different from most people. With their rich inner lives and their deep abiding desire to find their life purpose, they don't always fit in with those around them. So that goes yeah. back to exactly what, what you said. Yeah. Yeah. INFJs value deep, authentic relationships with others. Few things bring these personalities as much joy as truly knowing another person and being known in return. So that to me, like if I were looking at this right next to my chart, it's like that's the Leo and Scorpio. It's a desire to be seen and to be not validated, just like truthfully seen and yeah. then to be loved for who that is, you know, and that's very Scorpio like catharsis. And I think that just the whole I being that introverted, you know, getting mm -hmm. your energy, it does not come from people. It comes from that alone time. And that I could see bringing out that, I don't know, like just not necessarily conflicting energies, but it's like, I want people to know the real me, but the real me comes out when I am by myself. And it really has to be a special type of person that the real me comes out around. And so that does vibe with those, you know, Scorpio placements, like you said, and how it yeah. is like the, the Leo or Aries desire of, hey, this is me. Whereas maybe you know, placements that have that Scorpio energy, but not as much of the, this is, you know, I want me and my truth to be known. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay if they're just vibing on their own, but there is this like push and pull of, I need to have me time, but I also really want to share me with others that yeah. can bring that, I don't know, that feels like very INFJ. Yeah, it's kind of odd to have I and J because I is that very introverted and J is, I mean, I think in the analyst episode, we, I kind of, felt like J was more inserting themselves, whereas P was more observing others, mm. um, just perceiving it rather than like judging, yeah. like putting your judgments in. And those like just being introverted, but also inserting yourself, that seems so like hard to navigate or hard to balance out like okay I don't really have the energy and I find myself doing that a lot like when I have conversations I tend to always just become the listener or like an audience member to other people because it takes a lot of energy for me to decide like okay I'm gonna share this story or I'm gonna talk about you know something I'm experiencing because it means oh god okay I have to start from the beginning and there's so much to share and I mm. often just end up being silent but then when I do decide like, oh, you know what, I'm actually going to share, I'm going to talk, I, I do enjoy it. And I enjoy that being, you know, I enjoy being a storyteller. Yeah. And I, I always think that's my Taurus placements of like, I I can tend to be a very silent person or, um, I mean, unless I'm in my Leo rising state. I know, I'm like, I'm like, it's funny because I don't often, I don't often come across that version of you. I know it exists, but it's funny when you're sharing it, like this is within this this community that that doesn't yeah. come out as much and but it does because yeah. it has both sides to it yeah and I, I would say that I with you I do 
do that a lot. Like I tend, I tend to be a listener, you know, like you are very open to sharing stories, whereas I take a little bit longer to like no, share a story. So I do, you know, play listener a lot. And, um, but that judging, like there is a calling to share and to insert and to not just insert yourself, but insert insights, you know, mm-hmm. like where these diplomats do have insights, but you think of diplomat as an umbrella, they're very non-partial you know or impartial yeah. they're not yeah. super involved like when we think of them in whatever in the world of or like working in the un but also this this personality being called the advocate like really plays into only inserting yourself when it feels like the payoff of draining your energy is worth it and like Ooh. fighting for others you know i love that because this is my mom as well she's an infj and mm-hmm. i love that because it like she just we just call her like switzerland because she really will not insert herself and you know yeah. if she does that it's a big deal and that's something yeah. that holds weight and it is and i i it is advocating and i really like that idea of advocating for a cause and advocating for self mm. that they yeah. both are are at play yeah and advocating means choosing a side you know whereas diplomat is like we're going to talk about the mediator next but advocate is we're we're choosing one side i'm not mediating between the two i'm supporting one and i'm i'm speaking up for it so that Mm. that idea of tackling injustice really speaks volumes for this personality yeah yeah um also like valuing deep authentic relationships this is very like i could see i mean you have the charts for um the people who responded to the google forms but i could see this being like venus and scorpio placements like people who crave like deep deep connection with others yeah yeah um people with this personality type tend to slow down and really evaluate how what they do might impact others before they take action Consequently, it can frustrate them when other people don't recognize their good intentions. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've spoken about it a lot, but I def- I have this, like, um, I guess it's, like, an ethic of um, don't speak about anybody unless you would be willing for them to hear what you're saying about yeah. them kind of thing. And it's the same for, like, take making taking actions and stuff, like some um yeah it's empathy to a fault where it's like oh okay let me pretend i'm the person that has hurt me and see where they're coming from kind of thing and and almost like advocating for others before you advocate for yourself but i don't think that's true of all infjs i think that's just my own fun cocktail that others might relate to (laughs) i like how you put that your own fun cocktail but i also i I liked the uh, the whole thing about I'm going to take my time, but I you better be able to understand my intentions behind it because they yeah. are that NF. I think that the NF, that, that's a whole like diplomat's yeah. energy is that I can feel these things. I am almost like emotionally analyzing things. It's not necessarily because that's going to be not as not as tangible perhaps as actually analyzing because it, it's not the analysts we're not really analyzing anymore but you know can't you feel my intentions behind this can't you feel what's going on don't you mm. know that i'm taking my time because i need whatever because yeah. there is that un, there's a lot of unspoken energy behind these diplomats i think Ugh, yeah <laughs> my Aries does not like that so like because that is the way that I operate but sometimes my Aries gets so frustrated of like oh can we please just be direct like I'm so tired of you know speaking in energetics yeah. and stuff like that like I need it to be a, a tangible conversation we can have I will say I think maybe in the past I've been more frustrated when people don't recognize my good intentions but now after having gone through enough like confrontational situations i've come to terms and maybe this is something other infjs can do too is like come to terms with well i know that i intended well and i know that this was very truthful for me and that i was you know doing my best and like believing that for yourself mm-hmm. and maybe that's like the introverted energy of knowing yourself and knowing your, yeah. your intentions well yeah 
introverted energy spends a lot of times with themselves. Like that's, that's the nature of introverted energy yeah. or needs to spend a lot of time with themselves, you know? Yeah. All right. So last little recap of INFJ strengths are they are insightful, principled, passioned, passionate, and altruistic weaknesses are they are sensitive to criticism. Uh, what do you mean? That hurts. <laughs> Reluctant to open up avoiding the ordinary and tend to burn out, which I guess we didn't really touch on, but this is very true for most of the diplomats, like avoiding the ordinary um, mediocrity is not an option for these. Like they are very passionate and they tend to dream big. Like they have big, they're fantasy lovers. Like they'll daydream and they'll um, come up with like ideas bigger than maybe is possible in the moment. Hey, your Sagittarius buddy over here agrees. <laughs> more is more. Um, so for our, like I said, we had the most example charts for mm -hmm. INFJ, even though it is the rarest category. So Mimi oh, cool. already shared a lot of her yeah, personal insights. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have a few others that I just wanted to, you know, bring up again, we had so many thank you so much for everybody who shared. And the ones that we pulled, we have uh, Divya, Sammy and Elise. And I just kind of noticed that in all of these charts, including yours, that there are heavy earth and water placements, but definitely water placements. And that's something that really checks out with everything we're talking about intuitive for sure but the mm. introverted part the intuitive and feeling but then i feel like the judging part that comes in brings in some earth like brings in mm -hmm. some you know presence and some here i am with with what i have to say and what i feel and what i need and um for divya we have just in a top three we've got cancer sun virgo rising gemini moon for Sammy, we have Gemini Sun, Aquarius Moon, Scorpio Rising. And then for Elise, we have Taurus Sun, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Rising. And so there actually, there is a lot of air that's present in these charts too, but just looking at them and where a lot of the energies are kind of concentrated is that there's a good amount of earth and water in all of them. Yeah. And I found that and interesting. Like, yeah, looking beyond the top three, like when you look at their personal planets, all of them have like Taurus Scorpio or just Taurus. Yes. And they all have Leo too, you know, like we've got Divya who has her Mars in Taurus, which could maybe be some of that more observant or introverted energy. And then she's got Mercury in Leo. So there is that yep. desire to be seen. Sammy's yes. got her Mercury and Venus in Taurus. Um, and then Elise has, I mean, Jesus, so much Taurus. Girl, I feel you. And then, you know, this <laughs> a little bit of Leo activation. So there is this like catharsis in the Taurus Scorpio axis, and then also this this desire to share. And and Leo, I know we I always say like, like desire to be seen, but it's also just a desire to like tell a story, perform, mm -hmm. um, you know, share an experience. And that goes along with the, it's not enough to just have those deep emotions and keep them to myself. There is that need or desire or drive to be myself with other people. There's something about the whole, like if a tree falls in the forest and no one like heard it, you know, where yeah. if I'm myself and others aren't seeing it and recognizing it and giving <laughs> me that, you know, I don't know, like, I don't want to necessarily say uh, validation, but it could be validation of just this is who I am. Did you yeah. notice? And like, yes, this is yeah. who I am. And I see the depths of who you are. And I recognize that that is you and all the complexity. I think that these example charts really show a desire to be seen in their complexity, but also the the feeling of I'm not just going to come out and show it. I'm not an E. I'm an I, you know, I need to do it in a in a different way these are the people who are putting instagram stories up when they're feeling moody and grungy <laughs> <laughs> aka me <laughs> wait i love that so much because <laughs> it's like yes i'm going to share but also i'm just going to share it on my phone and then i'm going to walk away and i'm going to be in my home and nobody's going to be disrupting me <laughs> excellent right. 
Yes. Let us know, INFJs, if that is also you. <laughs> well, all righty. Shall we move on to the next? Yeah, the next category that we have is the INFP. And the INFP is the mediator, and this is 4.4% of the population. So, Although they may seem quiet or unassuming, people with the INFP personality type have vibrant, passionate inner lives, creative and imaginative that they happily lose themselves in daydreams, inventing all sorts of stories and conversations in their mind. And I like that a lot. And for any like really OG listeners here, Tara, one of the original hosts of the podcast is an INFP. And I think that that is a perfect description of the feeling seeming quiet or unassuming and then having a super vibrant, creative, imaginative inner world that doesn't necessarily come out in in the public eye. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's changed here is that P going from judging to perceiving. So instead of having that IJ, which is introverted, but still inserting themselves, we have IP, which is introverted and being much more observant and keeping it within. But having a creative outlet is really good for these people. They're able to express themselves. I think this is still giving Pisces because it's like transmuting what they see in the world into an, a, a creative outlet and having to put it out instead of internalizing it. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right about the that P versus J of yeah. I don't necessarily have to insert myself because my inner world's creative and fun and and, and I'm here in it. So whatever, you know, there's yeah. a, a little bit less of that needing to put it out there. The, the INF personality type long for deep soulful relationships and they feel called to help others. And again, I think that's with this overarching theme of the diplomat empathy, you know, yeah that helping of others. And oh, okay, here, next bullet point. Empathy is among the INFP personality type's greatest gifts, but at times it can be a liability. The troubles of the world weigh heavily on their shoulders and these personalities can be vulnerable to internalizing other people's negative moods or mindsets. And gosh, isn't that just part of the game of being an empath? But I think really for the INFPs, because they are that introverted energy and that perceiving energy of not necessarily inserting themselves, maybe not necessarily putting themselves in a position to talk it out or to share mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, to live outside of that inner world to kind of process some of those things. I can definitely see how it could come across really weighing heavy. Yeah. And this I'm throwing in, obviously, I mean, just it being the mediator, like this is very Libran energy too, not inserting themselves, but making sure that everybody feels seen and heard. And and such a lesson for Libra is not to, you know, people please and not to internalize other people's issues as their own. And I think that having Libra and Pisces put together would really factor in the more emotional mindset too. Yeah. Which checks out for Tara, triple Libra, Libra mm -hmm. Mars. <laughs> All of that yeah. going on that really does fit that Libra energy. So mm -hmm. few things make INFP personalities more uneasy than pretending to be someone they aren't. With their sensitivity and their commitment to authenticity, people with this personality type tend to crave opportunities for creative self-expression. This is still giving some Leo or Taurus energy to me. Like, I think, I mean, I can see how Libra would feel uneasy pretending to be someone they aren't but I think it would take a long time for Libra to realize they're being someone they aren't you mm -hmm. know yeah and I think for Taurus or Leo it's like there's very much a it, it's hard to pretend I'm someone I'm not like you know sometimes yeah. you try and it's like very very difficult to yeah. to be anyone but yourself um, yeah. it takes a lot of energy especially with that introverted and um yeah the introverted type of personality that's a really good point because one of the charts that we're going to talk about definitely has that Leo energy. And I think that we, you know, for Leo and that creativity and the inner child and the performer, you know, there is such a creativity there, which totally checks out with that creative inner world that we're talking about. And while Leo gets the, you know, stereotype of being super extroverted, not every Leo is extroverted, yeah. but every Leo does still have that desire of, like you said, of the self and knowing the self and having themselves be seen in whatever way that means to them. It doesn't have to be literally, you know, on a stage, but their authentic self being seen and being, you know, having a, 
a moment of being known. So that really does play similarly to what we were saying with that INFJ. Yeah. And people with this personality type tend to feel directionless or stuck until they connect with a sense of purpose for their life. For many, this purpose has something to do with uplifting others. Mm -hmm. And I can totally see from, I, I feel like I've come across a lot of INFPs in my life. And I feel like INFP energy is the energy of like that introvert that gets adopted by an extrovert, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like there's there's that type of group like that at least was always the dynamic with me and Tara where I'd be like, okay, well, you're coming along with my friends or okay, well, here's my friend, yeah. Tara, you know, and, and just kind of being like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm coming along because there is not the same need to insert themselves, but there is that desire of, you know, wanting to have purpose and wanting to share and uplift and, you know, and be creative with others. But there's not necessarily that, like this mentioned, that direction that's going to be perhaps that internal motivation that it might not be enough of a push, but I can so see them being latched onto by that more extroverted yeah. personality. And I think a big lesson for introverts throughout their lives is like, accepting that it's okay to have to look to have like for your sense of purpose to look different because yeah. when you are adopted by an extrovert their sense of direction and purpose looks so adamant and so obvious because they put it out but yours is going to look different because it's within and you have to find it within and it's not as externalized it's not as easily seen by others it's something that you really have to like seek within yourself um and and i think that's a big thing for like infjs or infps to really feel out what is their sense of purpose what is their motivation what drives them what makes them feel like they're going in the right direction right because this is intuitive and in feeling we're not like looking at logic and reason to be like oh well these are the things that i studied so this is going to be my direction that i go in it's mm. what feels right for me in this moment and sometimes being directionless is the perfect opportunity for you to choose your direction too and to be decisive in that moment where, I mean, if we're talking about Libra energy, that can be quite a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. That does really vibe with this, this type, this mediator type and going over those strengths and weaknesses. The strengths are empathetic, generous, open-minded, creative, and idealistic. And the weaknesses being unrealistic, self-isolating, unfocused, vulnerable, too eager to please, and self-critical. So that really does go along with a lot of the characteristics that we see in Libra and a lot of the, um, you know, I almost, the, the self-critical, I guess we could all, we could all kind of have a little bit of self. I mean, everybody has a version of being self-critical critical of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's has that, but I do think that it makes me think of a, you know, Chiron Virgo or Leo almost mm -hmm. where there is this, am I good enough in the critical factor or am I enough to, to show up and shine, you know, like, am I perfect enough to show people where I'm at in my life? Yeah. Yeah, am I and, and on the Virgo side of that, and then on the Leo side of that, am I worth being in the spotlight for who I am? Yeah, which yeah. is really interesting, because I see here a chart that you have Victoria, she does have both Leo and Virgo in her chart quite activated. Yes. Yes. And Victoria shared with us uh, in the little comment section that you'll see on our forum, there's a part of the mediator strength section that speaks to a generosity of the spirit that I correlate to all the Leo. Generous attention, unconditional love, warm heart space, etc. Reading it actually lit up my heart space. I love that. Yeah. One of the weaknesses is rose colored glasses and idealistic thinking. I'm not an astro expert, but I think that's the Jupiter conjunct my Venus and Sun. So well, that I really... sounds like something an astro expert would say. It's very <laughs> insightful. <laughs> it is really insightful. But yeah. yes, there's a lot of so Victoria is a Leo sun, Aquarius moon, and Scorpio rising. So we have again that depth of that Scorpio that we mentioned from the INFJs, but then we have that lit up fire energy but then we also have that air the aquarius moon and of the you know sometimes misunderstood energy that we also talked about yeah 
I mean, and she's also got Chiron in Leo, which is what you had mentioned. That's so yeah. interesting. And Mars in Virgo, Sun in Virgo. Um, or no, no, no. Sorry, Sun is in Leo, but it just is is all up in there. But um, yeah, Mars being in Virgo, there is a need to do things very perfectly. It's actually interesting because it'd be opposite my Mars, which is in Pisces, which I really do attribute to my INFJ being like, I, I only take action when it feels right. And maybe this Mars and Virgo is like, I only take action, yes, when it feels right, but it has to feel right in a logical way. It has to look perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of circumstances behind whether it can feel right or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Very, very interesting. I love this. All right, moving on to the extroverted personalities. We've got ENFJ, so that's extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging. This makes up 2.5% of the population. Um, people with the ENFJ personality type feel called to serve a greater purpose in life. Thoughtful and idealistic, ENFJs strive to have a positive impact on other people and the world around them. So already we see they're very externally driven. They're very much like yes. protagonist. This just as a word means the hero of the story, the person yeah. we're following, the main character energy. ENFJs tend to be vocal about their values, including authenticity and altruism. When something strikes them as unjust or wrong, they speak up. This feels very... I mean, I want to say fiery, like almost Aries Sag. Like yes, they're going to take gonna up say space Aries Sag. and they're going to insert themselves. Yep. Like both E and J are these putting themselves out there energy. Mm -hmm. ENFJ personalities have not only an uncanny ability to pick up on people's underlying motivations and beliefs, but also a knack for understanding how others are feeling just by looking at them. At times, they may not even understand how they come to grasp another person's mind and heart so quickly. These flashes of insight can make ENFJs incredibly persuasive and inspiring communicators. So really picking up on energetics, like really picking up, like they can read a room. They can absolutely read a room. And this is, remember, the other side of that INFJ where the not there is a, a desire to insert themselves. But there's also that need to get their energy from their own personal space. And this E is getting their energy from people. And so the inserting mm -hmm. themselves into things and because they have the feelings, they are able to, you know, get that intuitive hit and they can insert themselves. That is, I love the way you put the reading a room, but I also, it like, I think that INFJ could read a room, but the ENFJ is going to say something about it. It's going to say something about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the INFJ is going to lock it in a file in their head, but ENFJ is like, great, let's use this. Yeah, yeah. So, ENFJs tend to have a clear vision of what people can or should do in order to better themselves, but not everyone is ready to make those changes. If they push too hard, their loved ones may feel resentful or unfairly judged. I think this is where we kind of teeter on the side of that self-righteousness that we talked about earlier, where there's that like injustice complex they yes. have to be the one to fix the problem in and and i think also that is like very airy sag sagittarius does um always like is on that higher road and always thinks everyone else should be on that like same moral road as them and aries is going to make sure other people know that yeah and it's really interesting because we'll come to it in a minute but i'm an enfp and the the p part of this versus the j part of this this is the the, the ENFJ seems to very much be that I am going to insert myself and be like, you know, what would make your life better is if you did this. And they're probably right, but like also might need to, you know, have a their style. Yeah, the way of delivering that. And does that person want to hear it? Are they ready to hear it? And have they asked you, you know, like that whole um, inserting part of Jay that we've mentioned, because I really relate to the having a clear vision of what people can or should do in order to better themselves. But there's something about the P that I have that will, you know, talk about that I don't think I insert myself as much as I would if I was a J. <laughs> Yeah. And and also, like, I don't want if someone if an ENFJ is listening and they're like, what the hell? You're only saying negative things. Like no. if you are friends with an ENFJ and, you know, you you get such good advice all the time. Like, yes, this is very good advice. And it's up to you whether or not to listen. But 
Um, these people are so, so insightful. They're so, they have such a duty to make the world a better place. They're idealistic. Um, again, altruistic, very empathetic. Like when they are giving advice, it may come across as brash or bold, but it's always from a place of caring. Yes, because it's that empathy element yeah. that we keep talking about with, you know, the overarching umbrella of these signs and sorry, of these personalities. And with the ENFJ ability to read that room and ability to really have a clear vision of what people can do. I mean, this is, this is such, like you said, a great advice giver. This is somebody that you do want to seek help from that you want to seek yeah. some you, you want to have a deep conversation like this is the person that you always come away from like a coffee date feeling like you've got some clear direction mm -hmm. yeah we're kind of shying away from leo taurus energy and moving more towards like aries and capricorn energy yeah like if we yes. were going to assign fire and earth which love that you said that because for the um en sorry for the enfjs it's very big personality energy in the charts that we have and mm. air is very present, but the, the Sag Gemini axis also was very present. And so yeah, I feel like there's, even though it's not an analytical, like we still have the intuitive where we're in the diplomats, we're not in the analysts, but there is air is very taking in all the information. And just like you said, the mm. reading a room, we're taking in all this information. So for our charts here, we have Sharon and Lacey and Francesca who have shared their charts with us, and they all have a Gemini Sag axis presence. Mm. And um, we have Sharon, who is a Gemini sun, Sag moon, Capricorn rising. So literally what you were saying with that Sag cap. Oh, wow. And then we have Lacey, who is a Gemini sun, Capricorn moon, Taurus rising. And then we have Francesca, who is a Libra sun, Aries moon, Sag rising. And so we have that air and fire that's really going on. And in Lacey's chart, we don't have that same fire. She does have her Venus in Aries. So there is that Aries presence there. But I actually, I thought it was very cool that, that the Gemini Sag access was lit up and that air fire was really, you know, present, which in the last set of the analysts, when we talked about them, we really came to that, um, that fiery energy when we got into the extroverts, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. And Mimi, like you shared, as you are a fiery energy person, but you have so much of that water and earth that are present, that yeah. is where we're getting a little bit more of that introverted, which comes back to whenever we're talking about quote unquote, masculine versus feminine signs, it's that external energy versus that internal energy. And it mm -hmm. makes sense with the extroverted versus introverted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why like so many people would assume that I'm a, an extrovert because my rising is Leo. Like, yeah, I come across as extremely extroverted. My son is also a fire sign, but it, those are the only two, you know, or well, and then Mercury. But like for the most part, I do have a lot more of these quote unquote feminine placements. Yeah. Yeah. Internalized. And I wanted to share, Lacey shared with us, totally understand and connect with the Myers-Briggs results. I'm still feeling like I don't understand my chart, even though I've had these readings, but I feel like my airy side just floats around and I'm feeling like it's time to be connected more. So I think that that is interesting about the airy side floating around, whereas mm -hmm. I think this is showing that this airy side is actually very much giving us observational accuracy in a lot of ways too. Yeah, and Lacey also does come across as having a big sense of purpose and direction. Absolutely. And is like, here I am, I can help with it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then Francesca shared with us that she's a protagonist. I feel the Libra brings me my diplomacy skills and the Aries moon, the confidence and assertiveness. A lot of mm -hmm. the info says protagonists can give too much. I think the Aries moon can help me balance that. Love yeah, that. That's great. Such great insights. Yeah. Yeah. Like prioritizing yourself. Exactly. So lastly, for ENFJ, the strengths are they are receptive, reliable, passionate, altruistic, and charismatic. And the weaknesses are they're unrealistic, idealistic, condescending, and intense. Very interesting. Mm. I kind of visually get the idea of like a sponge soaking in, basically like reading the room. And then when you squeeze that sponge, like it's changed what it absorbed into something better. You know, and like Ooh. all that soap and water comes out and it like actually creates something of use. I like that. Love a good analogy. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. And lastly, <laughs> lastly, we have the campaigner ENFP makes up 8.1% of the population. So I am not unique and special, but of course, <laughs> <I am>. um, <laughs> but here I am ENFP. So people with the ENFP personality type are true free spirits, outgoing, open-hearted and open-minded with their lively, upbeat approach to life. ENFPs stand out in any crowd. Well, this is interesting. The whole campaigner, you know, like instead of being the protagonist or the mediator or the advocate, like you're the you're the one out there giving out flyers, meeting people, talking to people like this really speaks to your 11th house son. It really does. <laughs> it really yeah. does. Because, again, it's that extroverted energy. We still have the intuitive and feeling that all of these have. And then we have the perceiving where I feel like the campaigner it doesn't, they don't necessarily have to be the one that's like running for office. They're the ones that are like telling everybody who's running for office, you know, they're yeah. like really. And they're definitely still campaigning for what they believe in, you know, yes. like very much tied to their beliefs and what's true for them. Absolutely. So but they don't that. have to be the main character. Yes. Yes. And true free spirit checks out with being a Sagittarius over here. Yeah, so for sure. <laughs> in their unique way, ENFP's introspective nature is driven by their imagination, wonder, and belief in things that cannot always be explained rationally. People with mm -hmm. this personality type truly believe that everything and everyone is connected and they live for the glimmers of insights that they can gain from these connections. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I mean, this is really, really speaking to the Sagittarian archetype, like yeah. magical thinking. Absolutely. And also it's it's much more related to how the mind works. And Sagittarius is one of the signs that rules the mind. It rules higher thinking, higher education, like the way that we expand our minds. And this really just plays into that, the belief system and, and how their mental space dictates their physical experience. Yeah. And the whole idea of wonder and belief that really comes down to Sagittarius mm -hmm. in ninth house too. There's something because there's an optimistic energy about wonder because you have to have a, a an excitement and wait, this is going to be great behind that. And then obviously with the whole belief system comes along with that. And this is very interesting. ENFPs are yeah, the most likely personality type to believe in the concept of karma. Yeah which I thought that was fun. <laughs> that's so good. And also, even though this is not my mom, but I just have to say there was like a used car dealership that was called CarMax and my, and it had the sticker on the back of the car and it's spelled like a car, not with a K for karma. And my mom took off the X of it and had it oh on the God. back of her car, karma. And I just, nice. she's a sad rising and I just love that so much. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, oh man, am I such a believer of karma? And I think that, I think karma can sometimes, at least in my personal experience, can help with that optimistic nature because it is like a, you know, I'm going to act the way I want to be treated. And if I didn't treat that way, get treated that way, that person is yeah. going to get the lesson that they're going to get, the way that they're going to get it. And I'm going to get what I'm going to get because I keep putting good stuff out there. And I think that that allows a lighter nature, which is very ENFP. Yeah. Yeah. And so ENFPs are independent and creative, always on the lookout for the magic and meaning in everyday life. They can't help but ponder the deeper significance of life, even when they should be paying attention to something else. This literally <laughs> seems like like my magical book club, like description on my website. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> like if you look at my like about me section, it feels like that was copy and pasted. Um, I, <laughs> looking out for the magic and meaning in everyday life. There is that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to say. Optimism. Yeah, it's optimism, but it's also something that interestingly about the belief, because belief we bring to Sagittarius, but also we can come to Virgo with that. And I mm -hmm. think there's something about the everyday, which we can sometimes boil down to saying mundane life, you know, like mm -hmm. finding the magic in the little things. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, Virgo being in there. Yeah. ENFPs believe that everyone deserves to express their feelings and their empathy and warmth create spaces where even the most timid spirits can feel comfortable opening up. And that's interesting. I feel like that gives me like Leo energy too, in the way of let me shine the light for you to feel seen because I know what that, that that's something people want. And especially yeah. this being an extroverted 
personality, like being aware of what other people want and how other people are feeling. There's something that also feels Aquarius 11th house to me there too, because mm -hmm. there is a connection of everybody and being like, you're like, you are important. You are a part of this group and you should feel comfortable because you're just as a part of this as anybody else's. So let's make sure this space is feeling open and welcoming to everybody. I don't see that being Aquarius, but I get you. Maybe. Do you see that being 11th house? No. Well, kind of. But I think I see that more just I, that's like the same reasoning that I would say, Leo. OK, because I, well, I don't think Aquarius is warm. I agree. I agree. I like oh, good. then I like that it is that Aquarius Leo axis that is somehow activated there with the connection of people. But then that Leo warmth for sure. No, I totally yeah. do agree there. So for ENFPs, their intuition may lead them to read too far much into other people's actions and behaviors. Instead of simply mm. asking for an explanation, they may end <laughs> up puzzling over someone else's desires or intentions. You mm -hmm. didn't have to Virgo. call me out like that. Um, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very much like what you said, the Virgo, reading yeah. into it a little much. Yeah, also feels very Sierra. Like, let me just, I will ask somebody, but I'll read the fuck into it first, you know? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> and then for our strengths and weaknesses, strengths, curious, perceptive, enthusiastic, excellent communicators, easygoing and positive weaknesses, people pleasing, unfocused, disorganized, overly optimistic and restless. And again, I'm just like, how, how, how freaking obvious this is just like a list of my strengths and weaknesses. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting because out of the four and this being the most common of the diplomats, like out of the four, this feels the most concentrated one sign like this reading through the description. Like, I don't have much to say because it is mostly Sagittarian energy to me. And I think you're right. Like throwing in some Virgo, some of that Aquarius Leo axis too. like it, they have a little bit of influence in there but out of all four of the diplomats this one feels the most concentrated in one sign i agree and that's why when i was getting into astrology knowing i was an enfp i was like dude this is exactly what enfp is i'm a sagittarius like are all sagittarius is enfp my god you know it right. really does feel that way um I mean, as far as just my top three, if you're just popping in here, I am a Sagittarius sun and rising and I have a Capricorn moon, but I also do have Sagittarius, Mercury and Venus. And my two big stelliums are Sagittarius and Capricorn. And I feel like the ENFP encompasses so much of the Sagittarius energy, but I will say because I have so much earth and fire and mutable and cardinal, I have noticed really the past like year we're looking into my own chart, how much I relate to Virgo energy. And I mm -hmm. think that there is a lot of Virgo energy to be found in ENFP that wouldn't come from just pure Sagittarius energy because Sagittarius energy is very chaotic. And also I think that there's something that the earthiness brings that intuitive element maybe more so not that fire can't be intuitive because we're both intuitive fire signs over here but yeah. i think that there's something grounding about earth elements that does bring in a little bit i mean we've really kind of seen there's earth. something physical yeah yeah exactly and and like communicating with your physical body that's yeah. i mean this is embodiment you know yeah so for all of these i feel like the the whole diplomats category they're the one that feels the least grounded to me is that infp there's something that seems a little more not even grounded oh, really? but but sorry I maybe more like e tangible enfj is the least grounded because i think it's the one that's like flitting around the most and like making connections and moving forward i think i infp is grounded in that it yeah I, like because i think i just really see it as taurus being very taurian mm. in its energy you know maybe the whole if we think about the enfp versus the enfj and the enfj being more one that's going to insert themselves that mm -hmm. enfp i can see that being a little bit more of that um <laughs> the virgo or earthy energy coming into play 
because Mm -hmm. a Sagittarius in purity would just say the thing. Yeah. And there is some sort of that perceiving energy that's like, let me see if that needs to be said. And or, hey, this is what I did. I'm going to share what I did versus I'm going to tell you what you should do. There's a different approach. Yeah. Very interesting. I love this. (laughs) <laughs> it's so fascinating. And I hope that this episode has brought you some clarity or, you know, has been fun for you to listen to and learn about these Myers-Briggs personalities and to also just explore how they connect to your natal chart or, you know, your friend's natal chart if you're listening to this because you know Diplomat. Um, so, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks so much. And definitely check out that Google form that we mentioned. You can find that in our Instagram profile. And yeah, let us uh, let us know what your thoughts are. If you connected to yours, what your signs are after listening to this and connecting to those different personality types and keep tuning in for the the next two installments of this that we'll have coming up. Oh, installments. Yeah, yeah. Sierra, why did we talk about the diplomats today? Because the stars made us do it. 